Have you ever read a word problem and suddenly forget how to read? Yeah, that happens to even the best of us. It doesn't have to be this way though. Word problems can be easy peasy if we master this technique. Hi, I'm Wensi, and welcome to episode 4 of my mini-series on Singapore math. I'm an expert on Singapore math because I grew up in Singapore. I went through 12 full years of Singapore's math education and lived to tell the tale. And now I'm getting my PhD in math education in the US. Today I'm going to show you the power of P in the CPA approach using bar modeling. Some of you may already be familiar with these rectangular bars because you've seen them in your children's homework or textbooks. These bars are what we call bar models if you're using Singapore math, or tape diagrams if you're using math curricula of a different approach. Bar modeling is an important part of the CPA approach. It acts as the visual bridge between the concrete manipulatives and the abstract equations. Bar models are the defining feature of Singapore's math curriculum, and quite frankly, it is Singapore's secret weapon that nobody else has quite mastered yet. They were developed in Singapore by Dr. Ko Tek Hong, a PhD in mathematics and his team in the 1980s. Bar modeling was initially introduced at fourth grade to prepare upper elementary students for algebra, but the method was an instant success so much so that it quickly began to be rolled out in lower elementary grade levels. My friends and I are among the first generation of Singaporeans to learn bar modeling starting in first grade. If we can't solve a problem, our teacher would say, <laughs> Bar modeling has been so ingrained in us that whenever we see word problems, no matter the difficulty, images of bar models instinctively appear in our heads. What many people don't know is that bar models aren't just a problem-solving tool in Singapore. There are four distinct purposes of bar modeling. Number one, bar models help students plan out their problem-solving process. Number two, bar models are used to strengthen conceptual understanding. Number three, bar models are used to build algebraic thinking. And number four, bar models are used to stimulate children to solve challenging problems. This is a sample SAT math problem, and it is a very easy one, but it has some of my top high school students stumped. American students would do this to figure out this problem. They would set the number of nonfiction books as x, which means that the number of fiction books would be 3x. 3x plus x would give us 480 because the total is 480 books. So 1x would give us 480 divided by 4, which is 120. Since we want the number of fiction books, we would need to find what 3x is. And 3x is going to be 120 times 3 equals to 360. I've seen many students get tripped up in the first step because they have a hard time figuring out which type of books to set as x. Here's the thing though, you don't actually have to use x to solve this problem. This is a routine math problem for third graders in Singapore, and here's how they do it. We are going to start by visualizing the first sentence. If a bookstore sold three times as many fiction books as nonfiction books, then we're going to use three bars to represent the number of fiction books, and one bar to represent the number of nonfiction books. It's important to know that these four bars that we have for both fiction and nonfiction books are equal in quantity. Now, we also know that a total of 480 books were sold, so we can say that our four bars here equal to 480 books, which means that one bar equals to 480 divided by 4, which is 120. In order to find the number of fiction books, we need to find the quantity of three bars, which will be 120 times 3, which gives us 360. If we compare these two solutions, you will find that the solution steps are practically the same. In other words, third graders in Singapore are practicing basic algebraic thinking without knowing that they're doing algebra. Some of you may be wondering if these types of problems are too challenging at the elementary school level. The example problem that I've shown is developmentally appropriate for elementary school kids. Why? Because if you look at the steps, the only concepts and skills that they need in this problem are basic multiplication and division. The bonus here is that when kids who are taught bar modeling eventually learn algebra, everything will click for them. When they put two and two together, they will realize that the bars that they were drawing are simply representations of the abstract variable x. 
Flower modeling helps students and adults visualize complex relationships between different variables in a math problem. It not only develops algebraic thinking before the introduction of formal algebra, it also builds confidence in children's problem-solving skills and reduces their cognitive load. We shouldn't underestimate our children before we give them the tools to help them learn and be appropriately challenged. So the next time you or your child are struggling with a word problem, try drawing out these rectangular boxes. If you want to learn more about Singapore math, you can purchase my book through the link in the description. Drop your most confusing or hardest word problem in the comments and I'll borrow all of them for you. On next week's episode, dropping at the same time on Wednesday, we will be exploring how Singapore math develops children into problem solvers. Don't miss out and stay tuned by hitting that subscribe button.